glorious Lord's Day. I'd like for you to turn with me to Psalm 23. You may not have to turn there, you might can quote it. 23rd Psalm, we're going to take our text. This is one of the most loved and most cherished passages in all the Bible. I submit to you today that the reason that David penned this beautiful psalm was because he knew the shepherd. I want to ask you, do you know the shepherd? Psalm 23, will you stand as we read from God's Word? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. For Thou art with me, Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray. Dear Father, we, we bow once again in your house this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your love, your mercy, your grace. We thank you for your son Jesus and for the salvation that we have in him. Father, we admit that we're wretched sinners, that we deserved judgment, we deserved hell, we deserved death. But Lord, we thank you that in Jesus we can be forgiven, we can be cleansed, we can be free. Father, I thank you for the beautiful words of this psalm, and I ask you, give me preaching grace today, that I might explain it in a way, God, that's uplifting, and that draws every one of us closer to you, that it goes right to our heart, and we're made to Rejoice in You and who we are in You and what we have in You. Father, I also lift up the lost and I ask for Your help to present Jesus in a way that everyone will see their need and know how to receive Him and in fact be drawn of Your Holy Spirit unto Jesus Christ today that salvations may be wrought. We give You thanks. We give You praise. We give You glory in Your house today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Again, I want to ask you, do you know the shepherd? Because that changes this psalm. If you don't know the shepherd, it's just a beautiful verse. It's just nice words. But if you know the shepherd, it takes on all new meaning. Every phrase comes alive. Every phrase has significant meaning to you in your life. And we want to discuss that today. The prophet Isaiah used the symbol of a shepherd to describe the coming of Messiah. He said, He shall feed His flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with His arms and carry them in His bosom and shall gently lead them that are with young. When Jesus came, He said, I am the good shepherd and know My sheep and am known of Mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. If you don't know the shepherd, you're about to hear from the very Word of God how that you can know Him. So I ask you to stay tuned in. David says, the Lord is my shepherd. Now despite this psalm's universal popularity, Psalm 23 simply is not for everyone. It's only really for those who know the Lord as their shepherd. Only those who can truly say the Lord is my shepherd can claim the truths found in Psalm 23. While Jesus is the good shepherd and He died for all, only those who actually receive Him by faith are His sheep. Unless he is my shepherd, then the rest of the psalm does not belong to me. If I am really his and he is really mine, then I have everything in him. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Or I shall not be in lack. I shall not go lacking. 
Because He supplies everything that I need. The Lord is my shepherd and He provides for all my needs. The shepherd is the protector. The shepherd is the provider. The shepherd is the satisfier of the sheep. According to Webster's Dictionary, satisfy means to fill up the measure of want. To gratify fully the desire of. To make content. Now I ask you, are you satisfied with Jesus? Because Jesus satisfies. Jesus satisfies the soul. Jesus satisfies the mind. Jesus satisfies. Or maybe does it take things to satisfy you? Maybe it takes money and possessions and material things. Listen, we ought to find our satisfaction in Jesus. If you know the shepherd, you'll be satisfied in Him. You'll find satisfaction in Him. Jesus satisfies our needs. First of all, I wrote down that Jesus satisfies our need for forgiveness. 1 John 1, 7 said, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. The fact is that the Bible says that all of us are sinners. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That there's none left out. Every one of us are sinners. All. Remember what we said about all? We looked up all as it's used in the original. All means all and that's all all means. So that's every one of us, isn't it? We're all sinners. And that means we're all standing in need of forgiveness. Jesus shed the blood that cleanses from all forgiveness. You see, verse, that was verse 7. Verse 9 says that if we'll confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So our greatest need is forgiveness. And Jesus satisfies that need. He meets our need for forgiveness. But that's not all. He meets our need for the new birth. Do you remember from Scripture a man named Nicodemus? Nicodemus was a religious man. He was an important man in Judaism. He came to Jesus because he had questions and, and uh, there was something lacking. And Jesus told Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Do you remember all that interaction? And Nicodemus said, How can I be born again when I am old? Can I enter the second time into my mother's womb and be born? And, and Jesus said, Listen, that which is flesh is flesh, but that which is spirit is spirit. And he went on to, in that context, to tell him that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on the Son of God is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Jesus satisfies our need for the new birth. Jesus satisfies our physical needs as well. Verse 2 said, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. I shall not lack food for my soul or my body because He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He knows how to take care of me. He knows how to provide the sustenance that my body and my mind and my soul needs. I shall not like refreshment either because He leads me beside the still waters. The refreshing waters. The restoring waters. We have God's promise don't we, that if we seek His kingdom first and His righteousness first with our lives, then He'll take care of all of our needs? In that context, in Matthew chapter 6, in that context, Jesus has been talking about food, raiment, and shelter. Basic necessities of life. Where we get all out of 
Whack is we get confused between needs and wants. We try to put our desires in place there. No. He said He would take care of our necessities. Everything else is by His grace. Everything else is undeserved. If we'll seek God first, put His kingdom first in our life, put His righteousness first in our life, then He'll take care of the basic necessities. Everything else, we all have extra, don't we? He gives us so much extra. All of that is by His good graces. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. In Jesus, we do not lack direction for He always leads us in right paths. A certain youngster trying to recite this psalm forgot the exact wording I understand, and said, the Lord is my shepherd, I should not worry. <laughs> he didn't get the exact wording right, but he got the exact sense of it right, didn't he? The Lord is my shepherd, I should not worry. <laughs> if the Lord is our shepherd, we need not worry because he provides. He provides for our needs materially. He provides for our needs spiritually. Verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. He takes care of our emotional needs. In the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to be fearful if the Lord is our shepherd because He's right there with us. The Word proclaims that the sting of death is sin unconfessed sin and unforgiven sin. But Christ has taken the sting out of death in that He has put away our sins once and for all. 1 Corinthians 15, 55 says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to His name. Now the worst thing that death can do to us is really the best thing that can ever happen to us. When we leave this world of trial and affliction and we go to a heaven of bliss, that's not a bad thing. That's the worst that death can do to us. The shepherd's rod and staff are sources of comfort in that they are instruments of protection and guidance. And yes, sometimes he may have to use that rod for correction. But when he does, it's because he loves us. He wants to see us come back in line with his will and his plan for our life. So it's out of love. Don't be um, In other words, be thankful for the correction of the Lord when you do experience it. Because He loves you enough to draw you back. With His staff, He may draw us out of danger. Or He may use them to protect us from some physical or spiritual enemy that's out to hurt us. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. The table pictures everything that is ours in Christ. Though surrounded by enemies, fierce trials, problems, circumstances, we enjoy the blessings of peace and security because the Lord is our shepherd. And He knows how to take care. And He's very well able to take care and to provide and to protect and all of those things. Thou anointest my head with oil. Now this is interesting in that the anointing of prophets, priests, and kings speak of consecrated or dedicated uh, service to the Lord and to His work. But that's not, what's, that's not the topic here. When the shepherd would anoint the head of his sheep, it was because it was necessary to soothe the scratches and the wounds 
that the sheep had encountered during the process of travel. They may have had to go through a briar patch and they'd become scratched and, and the shepherd would take the olive oil and he would anoint the head of the sheep. Have you ever done much study on olive oil? Fascinating. Olive oil has natural anti-inflammatory properties has natural pain-relieving properties. Pretty good medicine. We use today ibuprofen like they used olive oil. And so it was in tender care. It was in loving compassion. It was for their good. It was to help to soothe the wounds and, and, and help in healing that the Shepherd would anoint the sheep's head. Now think about that in relation to our shepherd and his care for us. He knows how to soothe. He knows how to heal. He knows how to care for all the bumps and bruises, scratches, cuts. All the things that we encounter, whether they be physical or whether they be emotional, whether they be spiritual, He knows how to anoint us and heal and soothe and care for. My cup runneth over. Think of all the riches of grace that we have in Christ Jesus. His love has no limit. His grace has no measure. His power has no boundary. We have everything we need in Christ Jesus. Bless God. My cup runneth over. Brother Travis sings songs sometimes drinking from my saucer. I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup's run over. Everybody used to serve coffee on a saucer. You got a little cup with a, on a saucer and that's how coffee was served. People don't do that anymore. We drink it out. I drink my coffee out of a three cup mug. It holds three cups at a time. But they used to serve it in it. And old, my grandpa and my wife's grandpa, I've seen them, they'll tip it cup over till the coffee runs out into the mug and then <laughs> slurp it out of the mug. Because they wanted hot, hot coffee. But it didn't want to burn their mouth. They tip it. Now, I don't want to hold up a little bitty cup like that was. I want a big cup to hold up. But the Lord makes that to run over. He's so good. I don't deserve His blessing. I don't deserve His goodness. But thank God for His goodness. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here's the secret of a happy life. A happy life now, and a happy life forever. Guided through life by God's goodness and mercy. We can enjoy the Lord now. We can enjoy our relationship with Him now. We can... Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. David's not saying he didn't face trials. David, David faced some big trials. And you and I face some big trials, some fiery trials sometimes. But we can still have goodness and mercy through our shepherd. And then at the end of the way, when we reach our eternal dwelling place, the Father's house, isn't that the promise? Isn't that what we're looking for? Jesus in John 14 told the disciples, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in Me. In My Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto Myself that where I am, there you may be also. And Thomas spoke up and said, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. When we get to the Father's house, it's going to be wonderful. When we get to that place prepared, 
by our shepherd for those that are his. Oh my. It's too great for, for tongues to repeat. We don't have the words. We don't have the mind to, to comprehend all that's waiting for us. He gave us little glimpses. But that's all we have. But I can tell you this, it's going to be glorious. And it's going to be home. Our eternal home. I hope you'll see Psalm 23 is wonderful words of life. I hope you know the shepherd so that you can claim all these wonderful truths from this psalm. I hope you'll find Psalm 23 to be a psalm for your life. See, when we need spiritual refreshment, there's green pastures. When we're weary, the shepherd provides still waters. When we need revival, the shepherd will restore our soul. When we need guidance, the shepherd will guide us in right paths. When we're confronted with death, the shepherd will provide victory and see us safely home. When we're wounded, the shepherd will anoint and care for us. When we need companionship, the Lord will send, the shepherd will send goodness and mercy to be with us. When we leave this life, the shepherd will provide a heavenly home forever. Now, I want to ask you, will you make him your shepherd? He wants to be your shepherd. He's offering Himself to you. We've established today that every one of us need the shepherd. Every one of us need forgiveness. The only ones who don't need to be saved this morning are the ones who are already saved. <laughs> See, we all have that common need. The good news is that Jesus' blood will cover all our sins. He died for the sins of the whole world. Now that don't mean the whole world is saved. It means that He paid enough. He died. He shed His blood for the sins of the whole world. But what did we read from John 3? About how to reckon that to your account. Believe. Believe in the name of the Son of God. The only begotten Son of God. Believe in Jesus. Place your faith, your trust in Him. Just cry out to God, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. I need your forgiveness. Jesus, I realize that you died for me. I realize that you rose again for my justification. I realize now that you're the Savior that I need. I place my faith in you. If you'll do that, by the authority of the Word of God, you can be saved. The Bible says in Romans 10, that with a mouth confession is made unto salvation, and with the heart man always yeah, and with the heart man believeth unto salvation. See, I'm like that little boy, I sometimes get the words tangled up. But you get the point of it. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Will you call upon him today? Will you make the shepherd your shepherd? Then you can claim all the truths of this psalm. Let's stand. Dear Father, we thank you today. For your love, we thank you today, God, for Jesus. We thank you for salvation and forgiveness. We thank you for shedding your blood, Jesus, to pay for our sin. And today we thank you for your Holy Spirit who draws and convicts. And we ask you today, God, draw us, convict us, that some who are outside the fold might come in and be saved and, and, and become your sheep. And Lord, I pray that every one of us who are yours will be drawn closer to you than ever before. In Jesus we pray. Amen.